God bless you. You may be seated. Welcome to His church. To those of you that are here in person and to those that are joining us online, I'm so glad that you're here with us today as we are beginning our brand new fall series entitled More Like Him. At His church, our mission is to know and make known the way, the truth, and the life together. Amen. Each year in the fall, we come together with a goal of growing together as a church body. As most of you know, we have small groups, different times of the year, and there are different subjects that we do in the spring and in the summer. There's a variety of things that we study as a church, but in the fall, we all come together and study the same thing so that we can grow as a body together. Amen. And so we are studying this, this topic more like him. We want to be more like Jesus. Amen. And uh, I would like for you to just turn to John 14, verse 6, as a reminder of what Jesus said to Thomas. He said, I am the way the truth, and the life, and no one comes to the Father except through me. Now just leave that up there for a minute. I want you to just think about those words. No one comes to God, comes to the Father, except through Jesus Christ. Now there's a, we could just talk about that for a while. What does that mean? I can tell you it means we're going to have to be more like him. Amen. He's our example. Aren't you thankful we have a model to follow? Aren't you thankful that, oh, that Jesus Christ, amen, came and became the first of many brethren, the Bible says. He's our example. And so we're going we're gonna to talk about what it means to be more like him. I'm grateful for his life. I'm equally grateful for his death on the cross. <laughs> and amen, aren't you glad to know that he did not stay in the grave. Amen. That he rose again from the grave. And if you look at me, look with me at Romans chapter 6 verse 3, there's a powerful illustration of why this means so much. Paul is talking to the church and 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 or excuse me, where are we at? Romans 6 there he is. And and he's saying, "Do you not know? Did you guys not know this?" That as many of us were baptized into Christ, into Christ Jesus, were baptized into his death. Now hold, hold on before you go to the next verse. Think about that. He's saying to those that are gathered there, do you not know that as many of us, so it seems clear that not all had been, right? So he, he's saying, There are many of us here who were baptized into Christ Jesus. Why is that so important? Why is it important that we're baptized into Christ Jesus? Not into a Trinity God. But we are... (laughs) I'm not trying to get on anybody's toes here today. I'm just telling you, you've got to understand... Amen. When we are baptized in the name of Jesus, there's a reason we are baptized into Jesus Christ, the Scripture says. We're baptized into His death. That means just like He died, when we are baptized or buried with Him in baptism, we are joined with Christ. Let's look at the next verse, verse 4. Therefore, we were buried with Him. Now, I'm glad that's not the end of the story. (laughs) Amen. But we were buried with him through baptism into death. Now, if you've ever come to the place in your life, and and I know I'm talking to a lot of people that have already been baptized, but if you're watching us online or or if you're here today in this service and you're like, you know what, Um, I'm not really happy with the person that I've become. There is an answer for you. Amen. Amen. And you can, that, that old person, the one that, that aggravates you, that disappoints you, that, that, that you, you, know, you just never can seem to do, that person can die with Christ. 
through repentance and baptism in the name of Jesus. I hope this is sinking in today. I know these are words that we talk about a lot, but I'm praying that somebody will get a revelation here today. Amen. Of what this means, that when we are baptized, it's not just a ceremony that we go through, but we are baptized with Christ in death. So that, just as Christ was raised from the dead, amen, aren't you thankful for that? Just like he was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, even so we also should walk in newness of life. Jesus rose again. How many of you realize that we need to rise again? Oh, hallelujah. He was given a glorified body. Amen. He walked on the earth many days after, and he was seen of those that knew him. Wow. Now, what does this mean for us? This means that when you're baptized in the name of Jesus and you are joined together with him in, in death, you also have the ability to be raised up into a new life. Anybody thankful for that opportunity that we are given here today? Come on, let's praise him and thank him. Thank you, Jesus. And so today I want to talk to you on this subject, amen, the newness of life. Walking in newness of life. A problem, I believe, I think most of you would agree with me if you really got honest here this morning. One of the problems for the church those of us that claim to be followers of Christ are sometimes bored. We're bored. <laughs> We're, I'm telling you, sometimes it seems like it's just the same old, same old. And you know what? That's not the will of God. That's never been God's will for you. It's to just, well, we understand the importance of the new birth and being born again, and that's wonderful, and I'm not taking anything away from that. But there's more to it than just that. There is a new life. Now, a lot of times we want to go, well, of course, Pastor, that's what happens when we repent and we're baptized in Jesus' name, filled with his spirit. We're born again. It's a new life, and that's what it's talking about here, right? That new life. Well, I was thinking about my, my son, my firstborn son. I've, I have three children, and I'm proud of every one of them. But I was just thinking about my firstborn son, and I remember we took lots of pictures when he was born. He was a chubby little thing. I mean, he was chunky. Uh, I remember we took lots of photos. We celebrated his birth. And some of you parents, you know what I'm talking about, Right? What a great day that is. I mean, it's hard to explain, amen, you know, until you experience it for the first time, what it's like. It's, it's inspiring. It's, it's, it's unbelievable. But I got to tell you now that he's grown, and he is a, a father. He is a man. He has, uh, he's married, has his own children. I can look back and remember his birth and be thankful, but that's really not the stuff that really gets me excited about his life. Amen. I remember when he graduated from high school. I remember the day that he got married to his beautiful wife, Lindsay. Those were great things. I'm so glad that he didn't, wasn't just born and that was the end of things. Come on. I, I, mean, I mean, and probably the, one of the greatest, most notable things that he did was to have offspring. Come on, any grandparents in the house? They call them grandkids for a reason. Grandkids, right? They're grand. They're awesome. Amen. And I could just spend the rest of the service telling you about my awesome grandkids, but I won't do that. But I did get a video this last week of Ellie, who's only a year old, and she said, Papa. Just saying. It's great to see their lives. It's great to see them grow. It's great to see the things that they accomplish. When they were little, 
and, and they were two, three, you know, they would always want to come and get in bed with me and Diane. And I'd be like, honey, they're going to have to learn how to sleep in their own bed someday. <laughs> and, and she didn't get this, right? She didn't get this. And so I remember one night um, we were laying in bed and, you know, kind of not falling asleep yet. And I hear the door open and I hear these, this little shuffling. And what we did that night that my boys weren't aware of is we slept on different sides of the bed. You know, we usually always sleep on one side or the other, but we, we were on different sides of the bed. So they come, they're down low so we can't see, you know. They're actually not wanting dad to see. And, and they come over and they pop up and I'm looking at them. <laughs> They thought they were coming around to mom's side, but it was dad's side, right? And so, and so they go, and they go, and they come over to the other side. And, of course, Diane just lets them come right into bed, you know. But here was my thing. I said, this is what I said, Brad. I said, honey, if you keep doing this, they're going to be like 16 years old, and they're going to want to still get in the bed, and that's just not going to work. I'm sorry. Come on, have you ever worried, any of you parents that have young children, you ever worried, man, I don't know if they're ever going to grow up, you know, I don't, you know, I'm worried. They grow up, don't they? They grow up. You know what? I've seen, oh, this is going to, I don't mean this to hurt, but it's going to be the truth. I've seen people that were born again, but they got stuck, right, in, somewhere in their early development. Let me tell you something. I am thankful, amen, if you have repented of your sins, been baptized in Jesus' name, you've received the Holy Ghost. That is awesome. That is wonderful. That is what, that's, what, that's how you know you're born again. But don't just stay there. What is this series about? We want to look at the example of who Jesus was, how he was with other people, how he, oh, are you ready? What he said to do about your enemies. Anybody got, don't raise your hand. Anybody got any enemies? Oh, if you don't have any enemies, you probably aren't doing much. But everybody's got enemies, it seems like, you know? Other, oh, I don't want to get off on that. But <laughs> if you don't have enemies, that might be a problem too. But here's the point. We want to look to him. We want to see how did he do it. Aren't you thankful that Jesus Christ was a man. That he was tempted in all ways that we are tempted. That he struggled with things. He understands what we feel. He is our high priest. Oh. He is the mediator between God and man. It's like if you ever get in trouble, you need a good lawyer. Now, I know that's never happened to any of you, but uh, if, you've ever, if you've ever had to lawyer up, you know what I'm saying, um, it's, because, it's because you need somebody on your side of the ball, right? Right, 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 and thank God for that. But, but how many... What can you imagine that you have a mediator, you have an advocate, Jesus Christ, who understands you, knows. Oh, somebody lift your hands and praise him right now. Somebody thank him, amen, that he is for us. How many of you believe he is for us? Amen. Too many people just pursue being born again, but then they stop. They never pursue the new life. This series is about a new life in Jesus Christ. Spiritual growth. And I'm going to tell you something. A spiritual life, when it's lived correctly, is an adventure. It doesn't mean, okay, now that I'm following Jesus, everything is smooth, everything is easy, everything is... Oh, I, I want to just tell some of you that are going through things right now that are very hard and very difficult, don't ever forget that your Father has His eye upon you. He is watching. 
And if at any moment it becomes too much for you, he's watching. And he'll step right in. You know, I, I've had people say, well, why does God even allow the devil? Why didn't he just wipe him out? He uses him. He uses him. But he only lets him go so far. Those of you that are going through something right now, can you just put that situation on pause for a minute in your mind? And I want you to look back on your life. And I want you to answer this question. Are you better today? Are you stronger today because of difficulties that you've had to go through? All of us do. So you know what we have to recognize walking in this new life is that the struggles, the problems, the pain is going to produce something good because we are walking with him. We, <laughs> because we died with Jesus when we were buried in baptism and we are now walking in a new life. We have a, and, and listen, some of, some of you that, that everything goes right, has been going right for you for the last 10, 15, 20 years, and you're just, you're just going along, accept some new challenges. <laughs> okay, well, all right. <clears throat> I didn't think that was going to go over very good. <clears throat> it's supposed to be an adventure. And the reason, the reason it's not an adventure is because when things get tough, when things get hard, when things get bad, when the enemy comes against us, we start saying, Jesus, get, take care of that devil. You know, we rebuke the devil on everything. And I'm not saying we can't, we, have a, we do have authority over the devil. But maybe, 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 that you're going through something that's going to produce fruit in your life that you need and that you're going to enjoy, and that other people are going to benefit from because you are growing. Come on. How many of you in this place would raise your hand and right, right now and say, I want to be more like him. Amen. I want to be more like Jesus. Because if you don't raise your hand, I'm worried. Because either, either maybe you don't think it's possible, which is really sad, because through his grace, all things his love. Okay, I got to move on. One thing I learned in uh, many years of being part of a church growth network and being in church growth networking with other pastors, I learned probably the most important thing I learned was that sometimes you can ask the wrong questions. For example, what do we need to do to get our church to grow? It's a wrong question. A lot of people ask that. A lot of pastors want to know the answer to that. But it's the wrong question. For example, we should never ask how we can get the church to grow. What we need to ask is, what is holding back the church from growing? Because growth is a natural process. Amen. If the church isn't growing, then we got to say, well, what is holding it back? What is the barrier? Now, that works the same on individual lives. And, and if you can't look back this year, even just go back to January, go back to the beginning of this year, if you can't honestly see any growth in your spiritual life, in your walk with God, then you need to be asking the Lord, what's holding me back? Okay, got a little quiet. That's all right. Amen. Sometimes you got to ask those questions. If you don't have the understanding that removing that barrier, if you don't have the faith to believe that removing that barrier is going to bless your life, hear me here today. Amen. God's plan for you is to grow. God's plan is for you. I mean, I'm not saying it's always going to be easy. Amen. But there should come a joy, 
a peace, amen, which is the fruit, amen, that we have of walking with him. Somebody say amen if you believe it today. Amen. So in our series, which goes up until December 10th, this fall, we are focusing on becoming more like Jesus. I believe God wants to open our eyes to any barriers that could be limiting our growth. And, and so I want to give you five things that you can look forward to if you're ready. Amen. Things that you can look forward to in this series if you're really ready to grow. Number one, and you're going to learn this right away. Matter of fact, next Sunday, you're going to learn the difference between spiritual disciplines and spiritual formation. And I'm excited because Diane is going to be speaking on this next Sunday, and she's going to be talking about spiritual formation and what that means. And then also, you're going to, after church uh, on Sunday next week, you're going to go to your growth group, and you're going to, you're going to study even more what spiritual formation is. You're going to go even deeper. And that's the beauty of being signed up for a growth group. Because you're not just going to be sitting here on Sunday, but you're going to be in a small group, and you're going to be able to connect with other people. I'll talk more about that. But let me just give you one thing to think about as as you're preparing for next week. But spiritual disciplines are a lot of times prayer, reading your Bible, fasting, you know, doing all of these disciplines that we have to discipline ourselves to do. And you know what I've learned? That there can be people that have spiritual disciplines that are not becoming more like Christ. I mean, you, you, can, you can pray a lot. Spiritual formation is about being formed. It's becoming more like Jesus. And that doesn't happen automatically just because you pray. <laughs> are you with me here today? All right. I mean, we're going to we're going to go deep. That's why that's why we're going to have we're going to talk about it on Sunday and then in your small group you're going to be talking about it even further and you're going to get a chance to ask questions and talk about it because we've got to get off of this idea of spiritual disciplines and start embracing the idea of spiritual formation. That's next week. The second thing is you're going to learn why holiness, community and spiritual gifting. Those are areas where the Lord is calling us to grow. Grow. We're going to, number three, we're going to learn what it means to abide in Christ. What does that mean exactly? We know it's in the scripture. We know we're challenged to do that. But how do you abide in Christ? We're going to learn, number four, about the mission that he has, not just for the church. We talk a lot about his mission for the church, but he has a mission for you. He's got a mission for you. I feel like I just got to stop right there. I don't think some of you got that. I said he has a mission for all of us here today. Yeah, we, we all know Jake has a mission, right? We all know he's got a mission. You're right, right? He's walking in that. He's, 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 he's following God in that. But how many of you realize that a mission is not just something that God gives to certain people? He has a mission for you, Cirillo. Denzel, he's got a mission. A mission. Amen. Something that God wants you to accomplish. Letitia, he's got a mission. Amen. There are people that you're going to reach that nobody else can reach. Come on, there's a mission that God has for all of us. How many of you want to know what God's mission is? You know what the problem is? The devil doesn't want you to know his mission. The devil's going to do everything. Oh, don't listen to the pastor. He doesn't know what he's talking about. We're going to talk about the mission. And I pray that in this study you're going to learn what his mission is for you. We're going to, number five, learn more about becoming a worshiping community. I'm excited. Jake is going to be uh, speaking to us on that subject. And uh, thank, I thank God for the uh, gift that the Lord's given him to lead us in worship. How many of you are thankful for the worship service today? Amen. We're going to learn more about becoming a worshiping community. 
Because it's not about a group standing up here performing. <laughs> and everybody else out there goes, nice job, thumbs up. I'll give them an eight. Well, if they would have done my song, maybe a nine. Nobody gets a ten, you know. No, that's not what we're here for. We're here to be a community of worshipers. And, and the worship leader is not the artist <laughs> that is displaying his talent. Amen. He's a worship leader. Well, who's he leading? Not just the people up here. He's leading us. Amen. We're going to talk about what it means to be a worshiping community and how we can worship biblically. Amen. So that's coming. Amen. The best way to experience the new life God has is for all of us to make a commitment this fall that we want to grow together. How many of you want to grow together? So on Sundays, you're going to come, and I pray that you'll be faithful to every message this fall. I want to challenge you. Make this a priority. If being more like him is a priority, then make coming to church on Sunday a priority. All right? Come on, if there's nothing in your life more important than being like Jesus and growing spiritually, which I don't know what could be more important, then make this, make a commitment to this. And then sign up for a growth group. If you haven't signed up for a growth group, you are fortunate. This is the last week to do it. You see, it's so important that you're part of a small group or what we call growth groups because then you're going to, after the message has been preached on Sunday, you might have questions. You might say, well, I'm not sure how that really applies to me. And when you come to your small group, whether it's at someone's home or there are some people that are meeting online, although that group is full now, there, there are still openings for people to get into a small group. And why this is so important, well, there's so many reasons, but you're able to discuss this topic. You know how you learn more than just coming to a lecture or coming to Sunday and hearing the preaching is you dialogue about it. You talk about it. Amen. You express how it applies in your life. Amen. Recently, I read that the number one health crisis in America is not opioid addiction. It's definitely one of the worst. But I was shocked when a very renowned health professionals said that the number one crisis that we are facing today is loneliness. Feeling alone. Feeling alone. Now that can definitely lead to opioid addictions. I had to think about that. I'm like, I don't know if I agree. But then he said, people today have fewer close friends than at any other time in history. I thought, wow, I can see that. Because having close friends requires commitment. You have to be intentional about those relationships. Sometimes we just get so busy. I can say I've been guilty of just getting so busy. Most of my friends for a long period of my life were only still my friends because we could go for a year without talking and then pick up where we left off, you know. And if that didn't work for you, well, I but you know what? That's, that's, not, that's not emotionally healthy. We need people in our life that we are close to. You know, and, and you say, well, what does that have to do with growth group? Well, because you're going to be able to develop some relationships. I mean, I was blessed this past week week before, um, to go to the Boundary Waters and go into the wilderness with a couple of very close friends and, and spend time together. That's, that, that's, that's important. But a lot of times I'm thinking, well, I, can't, I don't have time to go do that. This is a crisis in our world today. And there's no one better 
to be a close friend and someone that shares your faith, and they're on the same spiritual, spiritual journey that you're on, that can encourage you, that can tell you sometimes what you need to hear but don't want to hear. Yeah, I'm one of those people. I don't like to be told what I need to hear. But I am smart enough to realize I need that. Come on, anybody else in that feel that way today? We need each other. Can you say amen? So I want to challenge you. If you haven't signed up for a growth group, do it today. This is something we want to do as a body. This isn't just something for a few people. We want to, this, this is intentional in the fall. Every single person here today, I'm challenging you. Maybe challenge is not the word. I'm encouraging you. Get in a growth group. All you have to do is sign up. And we'll show you how to do that. It's very easy. But you need people in your life. Matter of fact, you need people in your life that you don't agree with. Oh, boy. So if you haven't signed up yet, take that step today. It's not too late. And guess what? I've given you five, five great things that are going to happen. But there are some bonus blessings if you sign up for a growth group. So those of you that are in a growth group, here's your next, you get five bonuses, okay? If you haven't signed up, you want to sign up for these five. Number one, experience the blessing of sharing your experiences to help somebody else grow. Come on. Some of you, the Bible says, to whom much is given, much is required. Come on, don't just say, well, I've got this figured out. Let everybody else. Come on, come and share. Share your experiences. Tell some people that are new in their faith that you remember what it was like, amen, when you were going through that situation. That's what it's all about. Number two, experience the joy of serving together. I don't like coming to work day any more than you probably like coming to work day. But I've never left a work day feeling like I really wish I hadn't have done this. Because there is joy, amen, that comes when you serve together. When you're serving not for yourself, but you're doing it for his kingdom. I washed windows at the last work day. I hate washing windows. But I felt really good after I was done. And thank you for all of you that were here. Third thing, experience true fellowship. True fellowship as you share a meal and you have fun times together. Because every growth group is going to have a social. Come on, some of you like potluck. I know you do. All right. Jake, that's a reason right there, isn't it? Good enough. Join a growth group for the potluck at the end. Amen. The fourth thing, make a new friend. That can happen. And number five, bonus for those that are in growth groups, grow with the rest of his church together. Everybody say together. Amen. Come on, say together. Amen. Stand to your feet right now and one more time say together. Amen. It's important that we never forget that we were created for progress and growth. You were made that way for progress. And you know what? If you're stuck, I can already tell you something. You're not happy. Or what happens a lot of times is people just, they kind of get in this rut and they get stuck and then they don't believe that there's anything more, there's anything better. Come on, that's not what God wants for you. How many of you realize I'm not talking about just religious exercises? I'm talking about a new life. If there are things about your life right now that hard or difficult or unrewarding. There are things in your life that depress you. 
discourage you, if there are habits you can't break, if there are thinking patterns in your mind that are negative, God wants you to remove those barriers. He wants you to have the joy of the Lord. He wants you to be free. Too many of us are living the same old, same old spiritual life. You know, look at the lives of the disciples. It's kind of fun watching the chosen. I see things that are just, they bring the scripture to life. Do you realize how many times the disciples were constantly confronted by Jesus? You know, they lived one way, did one thing, and Jesus is like, no, that's not the way we do it, guys. Matter of fact, what's the same, what's the slogan? Um, never seen this before, or everything's different. What, get used to different. I'm going to just tell you right now, if you don't sign up for a growth group, well, that kind of came out a little stronger than what I was kind of thinking, but there's no threats. <laughs> there's no manipulation or threats here. Um, but, but ask yourself, is the reason because I'm afraid of something different in my life? Because a disciple of Jesus needs to get used to different. I was, oh, I don't know if I can share this because we're online. I'll just say it. I'll say it very generically. Within the last year, I had to go to an event where I knew there were people that were not for me. You ever had to do something like that? Maybe it's a family reunion or whatever. You know, I don't know what. But anyway. That was a joke. I, hopefully you're, all your families are for you. Um, uh, maybe you're going to a work party. I don't know. You know, you know people aren't with you. And so I was just praying. I said, now, Lord, I, I know going in this is going to be tough. And, and uh, uh, you know, just give me the strength to hold up. And he's like, I, I, I'm not only going to give you strength. I want you to love those people. <laughs> be honest, that's different. That's different. But you got the disciples. They failed test after test. Sometimes they were arrogant and impulsive. They spoke when they shouldn't speak, and then when they should have spoke up, they didn't say anything. Their faith was not always strong. They missed prayer meetings to take a nap. And they scattered when Jesus needed them the most. But because of the grace of God, he still used them to preach the gospel, to heal the sick, even cast out devils in his name. Amen. And that's why I want to close with this verse, Acts 2, 46. It says of the early church, they worshiped together at the temple each day. They came on Sunday, I think. I don't think it was Sunday, but they worshiped at the temple Amen. For our, for our context, I believe that's coming, honoring the, the Sabbath, coming to church on Sunday. They met in homes. That's additional for the Lord's Supper or communion. Guess what? Here's bonus number six for being in a growth group. You're going to take communion as a group in your small group. That's going to be powerful. But if you're not in a group, you won't miss, you'll miss that. This is what the Lord gave us as an example of the early church. They shared their meals with great joy and generosity, all the while praising God and enjoying the goodwill of all the people. And each day the Lord added to their fellowship those who were being saved. How many of you want all that God has for you for the rest of this year? Lift your hands with me right now. Father, in the name of Jesus, God, by your spirit, amen. God, touch our hearts, our lives. Hear our prayers and our desires to be more like you. We thank you that we have an example. 
We thank you, Lord, for your word. Hallelujah. I thank you for the body of Christ. Help us to realize how important we are to each other. And maybe maybe if there's some strife, maybe if there's some, some challenges, God, maybe we need to work on ourselves a little bit better. Amen. God, I pray, amen, in these groups, oh, Lord, that you will do a work. God, that you would bring us closer and help us to to look at your example. And one of your disciples who said, I must decrease so that he can increase. Let this be a semester of us decreasing and a semester as a church you increase in our lives. Let's close our eyes and Don's going to sing this song. Let's just reach out to the Lord right now in this place. You make all things new. challenge you to make a commitment. To commit these next several weeks, commit the next few weeks before the end of this year to focus on growing with God spiritually. To becoming more like Him. Amen. If that's your desire here today, we're going to sing it one more time. I want you to just come and stand around the front. Amen. You're just, you're just making a statement that I want to grow spiritually. Amen. It'll be at your pace. Amen. It, it's, it, it's at the level that you want to go. But I think it's important that we communicate to Him as He's reaching for us, as He's calling us here right now. Amen. That we respond and say, Father, amen, I, I want to grow. I, I, I want to be more like You. I'm thankful that You're an example that I can follow. I'm thankful that you have a mission for my life. Lord, I, I want to learn more, amen, from the, uh, my fellow believers, my brothers and sisters. Lord, I, I want to grow. I want to share the things that, that I can share that you have spoken to me. Come on, everybody here has something, amen, of value, amen, to contribute, amen, not only to the body of Christ, amen, but to our growth groups, amen, things that you can share. Hallelujah. Come on, by you being present, it's going to make it better. Amen. By you being on board, it's going to make us grow stronger as a church. Amen. Oh, we love you, Jesus. We love you, Jesus. That's it. Reach out to God right now. Amen. Hallelujah. Come on, don't miss this opportunity. 